Alright, so at the end of the last video, I showed you this list of built-in functions for Python. That is an exciting and powerful set of tools, however, that is nowhere near the amount of stuff that's out there that other folks have already made that is wildly useful and you can get a hold of pretty easily. The rest of the functions you might want to employ are stored in what are called modules, and to get access to those functions, you're going to need to load up those modules. So, well, let's take a look at how to make that happen. So the way to get at the modules is through one of the built-in functions, and that is this import function. And you'll see, gosh, this is a lot of help text. And as usual, we're going to blow through good, solid conceptual descriptions and show you how. So let's take a look at how import is used. All right, and we use that import function to import a module, which will give us access to other pieces of code to make use of. And as you can see here on this page I'm looking at and we'll provide to you, there are any number of modules that Python already comes with for you. Let's take a look at one that will be intelligible to most of us and that will go to T and let's take a look at this time module. So to get a hold of this time module, we will need to import time. Let's do that. All right, and this is exactly how complicated it is to import a module done. Now we have access to all of the functions and features from that time module. So let's take a look and see just exactly what we got by doing that. So we have all these functions from within time. The one that I'm going to show you first is the function time. So to call a function that we've loaded from a module we've imported, we need to do like so, time dot time. Now I'll admit this is probably a poor choice for a first example because the function we're calling and the module we're calling it from have the same name, but in general you can use module.function for things you've imported um, when you import this way. As usual, there are multiple ways to do things, but time.time .time returns a big, long float number that represents right now. And what this number actually is is the number of seconds that have passed since midnight January 1st, 1970. I'll admit that seems like a goofy way to measure time. I'm not going to delve deep into why it's set up that way, but I will assure you that there are a variety of other functions within this time module that will make that number a lot more intelligible to us. Let's take a look at some of them. So the first one we're going to look at here is time dot local time, which is a function from the time module. We can tell because we put time dot ahead of it, and then we need to call a number of seconds in there, and the number of seconds we want to use is, of course, time, time, which is right now. So if we run this function on the second function, we'll get the following return. Re uh, oh, gosh, output here. Let's take a look at it. Well, 2013, November 16th, 1.33 p.m. Gosh, that's all looking familiar, but it's still not all that legible. What you're looking at there is a time tuple, and don't bother yourself too much with what that means, other than that we're just one step away from being able to get this in a readable format. Let's throw one more function from this time module around the outside, and that would be time.ascTime. And when we run this, look at this, Saturday, November 16th. And we got military time for about 1.34 p.m. and the year is 2013. So that is a very brief look at this time module. And you can see that we have access to stuff we didn't before. Intuitively to most of you, that's very useful to be able to input, output, read, stamp, record what time things happened or how much time transpired between, between two things. And the time module allows you to do that. So that's a quick look at how to do this. As we move on, we will be using a lot more modules. Some of them are easier to get at than the way that time is measured, but just wanted to show you how you can get access to functions that aren't built in automatically into the interpreter by loading modules. So this is Ed for my bring back. Thanks for spending some time with us. We'll keep getting after it, build and build on what we've done and get you to a point where you feel more than competent within Python. So follow us, share us with other folks and keep coming back. We aim to satisfy.